how do you help kids in the, in the tall grass environment, which is how they have a tremendous amount of freedom, but it's not unlimited. And how, do you, how does the school help them recognize here are the things you need to do, even if you don't like it? Yeah, <laughs> you, you made a, a perfect, like, four words that often get brought up and then we really defunct for, and this is usually for the interested parent who doesn't fully understand yet and is mm -hmm. still learning, but that idea of like, well, there are no rules. And then it's like, well, here's our 35 page law book that yeah. every student has to not necessarily know, but they have to follow. <laughs> and so, yeah, how we do that, you know, there are, you know, not to just be a, a, a Marvel meme, but you know, with, with, I, I guess it's not with great power for us. It's right. with great freedom comes mm -hmm. great responsibility. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to, you have to maintain that, not necessarily maintain your freedom, but maintain the trust that we're giving you to have mm -hmm. that freedom. Mm -hmm. And we do that through, for our school, it's a restoration committee, mm -hmm. which is a daily occurrence. This, you know, for us, we do it right in the middle of our day. We have a kind of, I, I sometimes get off track a little bit, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, we have a we have a staggered schedule, so oh. you know we have a set amount of hours that the student has to be there, mm. but that can be any they can get there any time between nine and ten thirty, okay. so long as they stay for the right amount of hours. And mm. almost all of our students, whether they get there at nine or ten thirty, stay till the last second of the day mm -hmm. um, because they want to be there. Right. It's okay. just giving them the ability to get there at the schedule that works best for them and their family. Mm -hmm. But so about midday, once everyone is there on a daily basis, we have restoration committee. This is all and everything at our school is run by these. We, we don't even use the term students that often. <laughs> right, right. We use the term school members mm -hmm. because as a staff mm -hmm. member like myself, I am the exact same as the seven-year-old, and I'm the exact right. same as the 17-year-old. Mm -hmm. In terms of my power at the school, obviously, right, right. we're all different. But within that group, we are expected to, if our friends, if our, whether that be our best friend or just someone that we don't interact with at school that much, if we see them breaking the laws that we've all agreed to, and the rules that we've all agreed to, we're expected to write that up. And that is not the idea of punishment. That is the idea mm -hmm. of these are the rules that we have established and these were not followed. Mm -hmm. And those go from everything as simple as, you know, you're expected at our school to have the ability to take care of yourself. So mm -hmm. you left out the mess. It's your job to clean up the mess. I saw mm -hmm. the mess. I write up the mess. Mm -hmm. And to things that, you know, get get more serious that, you know, anyone interacting with people every day, you might have some more serious things. Right. All of this is expected to be written up. And then the next day at Restoration Committee, we go through what got written up the day before. That Restoration Committee is in a two elected positions. There is mm -hmm. a RC clerk who is basically the presiding body over the committee this is for our school we have two different school members that get elected into that so that they don't have to do it every day of the week right that they can mm -hmm. switch off that responsibility to make it not something that is a burden but yeah. something that they want to do and then uh, i have the same an rc secretary who is taking the notes and making sure that everything is written down and we have a trail of everything that has happened Mm -hmm. Outside of that, there is a four-person jury mm -hmm. that will include one staff member and then one school member of the three different kind of age brackets that we mm -hmm. use of youngest, kind of the middle age, and then the older students. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. anything that comes into that restoration committee, you have a truly a jury of your peers listening mm -hmm. to what happened. So the expectation is you're going to be there. You're going to be called in. You're, if you're a school member of 
you know, any school member is going to be on a rotating jury list that usually does like two weeks at a time. Mm. So you're going to be asked to go in there and listen to these cases. And, and then it is done with kind of formal order of, mm. you know, we call in the people, the person that wrote it up and the person that may have, you know, oh, so-and-so was roughhousing the other day, you know, and I wrote this up. Okay, we bring them in ask, you know, did the, you know, what, what do you remember of this? Do you remember this happening? Can you tell us mm. more about what happened? Kind of state your case. Right. They will leave the room. We will then, as the jury and the clerk, go over the case again. Did this break a rule? Did mm. this not? Yes, it did. Okay, what should the result of that be? Mm -hmm. You know, most I would say 90% of what we deal with is minor enough that it's okay. This is just a, a reminder, a warning, mm -hmm. a, you know, something very minor. And then, oh, okay. This has happened a few times for this individual. Okay. Well then maybe the result is we're going to give you an extra chore at chore time because you've been leaving messes out or, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and that's going to be agreed upon by that entire group. So mm -hmm. it's not, not going to be just one adult saying, you did that, here's your punishment. You know? Right, right. <laughs> and that turns into 90, I would say 95 to maybe 98% of all the cases we get is usually like three a day. Mm -hmm. And almost all of them is a, is a school member coming in and being asked about it going like, oh, you know what, I did that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, that, right. that happened. And I accept that I am responsible for that, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the long winded way to get to the answer that you're looking for is right. right. How do you learn responsibility? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, well, this is, this is one of the key things we do is right. every day right. we're going to have, you know, <laughs> it's, it's I, in, in some ways harder to stand up in front of all your peers and go like, Oh yeah, I messed up. Right. Right. But right. we have something where, almost 100% of the time, you know, that's a 98, it's a pretty high percentage of people right, right. like, oh yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's, that's a really important aspect to feature is that part of the reason it works is because it's not punitive and it's not humiliating and it's not, right. you know, all those negative things that most people associate with school discipline right. are, I mean, it's a trope of our culture. You know, you can see it in comic strips and movies and in tele television, the whole thing is it's tropes of, of humiliation and, and, and punishment and, and just really negative experiences, even if nothing other than like, if you think of a breakfast club from the eighties, mm. um, you know, utter boredom, you know, just being made to do nothing. Yeah. Which is just as negative in, in certain, because boredom is a negative state of mind. <laughs> it's not neutral <laughs> right it, it is actually something people suffer with and so and, and then of course the movie is fun because they make something out of it you know <laughs> like, like they, right. they end up they end up exerting their autonomy doing things to counter that that stupidity and and it makes a fun movie but yeah. but that's a really important thing to notice yeah i think is that and and, and it's it's also interesting because it's a trope in our society it's really hard to find positive examples of something other than that. Right. Like it's really, you know, there is no movie or, or, you know, meme quality thing I can point to that would be the positive side of, of like the, the type of thing you're doing because, because quite frankly, that's boring. Right. <laughs> you know, like from a dramatic <laughs> point of view, it's like, Oh, I go to a boring school, you know, in, when you think that all these tropes don't apply, because that's right. what makes things, you know, conflictual and, and dramatic. It's like, well, on the other hand, you know, people don't believe it when they hear about how, you know, oh, I don't have recess because I don't have to go to class. And, you know, it's like yeah. they hear the, the opposite side and then it, it's unbelievable. <laughs> right. It, there, There's no need for we have a structured 20 minutes for you to like let out all your energy because right, we're right. saying do you want to let out your energy right now go let out your energy right now right right 
This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.